So that just that just makes it difficult for Kavaros to get in right now. So yeah. we'll just have to see how this... Well, only got so much health, though. So it can only protect there for so long. <laughs> there it is. In immediately, down B absorb into a body block. And I feel like this this is sort of the uh, the catch-all advice for any zoning character fighting against Rosalina. You know Gravitational Pull has an exceedingly large field. You know what it could do to oh, projectiles. Yeah. Play around that. Know that it's a tool that is not afraid to take out. Yep. Bait it out. Make that an option that they don't want to use so that your projectiles are effective. I think the problem with that, though, is that, like, if Rosalina is in the air, it's going to be hard for Tulane to get something started, sort of like... No, it's not even throwing a bomb. I don't know, it's just a very weird matchup. One we don't get to see a lot. Right there, the the Absorb is doing so well, and Fallen can just grab the bomb and get his own combo started. Yeah, one little detail that's worth noting, at least for Toon Link, is that uh, his bombs normally are not grabbable. Like, they make contact, they explode. It's very simple. However, Gravitational Pull sort of changes things up. It puts the bombs in a position where they're very easy for the opponent to take up. Whether or not it's just grabbing it out of the air or being able to you know, wait a little bit while it hovers from gravitational pull, take that up, have that as an active uh, projectile in your favor. Kevaros is doing well. He's got the percent lead, managed to kill Luma, so Fallen's kind of, probably just going to have to stall for time right now to try and get Luma back. Yeah, one of the big issues with this matchup is the fact that Toon Link's not going to have trouble keeping up in the percentage race. Mm -hmm. Problem is ending out that stock because Rosalina's not the kind of character that you want to linger with a lot of uh, percentage. Because as Rage kicks up, mm -hmm. Luma suddenly becomes a much more of a threat. And we just saw Kevaros in a dangerous situation there. The up air. That was cute. I've, that was. That was really I cute. I liked that. <laughs> Down air into an F smash to kill off the top of the. Banana. And one thing to note was how the down air set up into the, uh, the untackable spin. Mm -hmm. So Toon Link, bug-eyed and flailing, with nothing to do but sit there and hold that out. Just accept his fate there. Lands the forward air, gets the stock. We've got an even game. All this talk of how difficult Toon Link is going to have a time to get in, not really looking like the case. Kevaros is doing very well keeping up. It's worth noting that amongst the zoning characters, Toon Link is one of those who fares a bit better in this matchup than others, say, for instance, of the Fit Trainer, or even regular Link, comparably. Um, I mean, where regular Link may have a bit more range and hit a bit heavier, Toon Link's small size and his speed certainly help up in this matchup. Yeah, mobility is definitely going to be a key for Toon Link's ability to get in. Um, as we see there, the weird um, grappling onto the side with Zair, double jumping around him, although Fallen is doing a good job of boxing him out on the ledge. Tried to bait out an air dodge, but Kev Aros was smart enough to fade back. Yes. And it looks like that's going to be Fallen's plan, is to just keep him out there and box him out, because that's where all this damage has come from, this stock. I mean, look at this. This is looking like an insurmountable situation. Final hit of Hero Spin is going to be protecting Kevros, but that was almost a done deal from the back there. And... Yeah, classic. Um, the easiest way for Rosalina to get a kill, in my opinion, is just to put them in disadvantage above you, and then she can just jump up get an up air, which we all know can kill at ridiculously early percent. Yep. It's all about just waiting for the opportunity, and I feel like with Toon Link, and it's also a plus regular Link, pulling the bomb is such a commitment. Mm -hmm. It may look like it's quick, but the fact that you're doing it at all, it's leaving you open, it's leaving you vulnerable. Yep. You have to know when the right time is to call for getting that bomb out. Fortunately, that's what can lead to your demise. I think notably, too, is the fact that it cuts off uh, Toon Link's aerials. So he can't go in and just, like, get a random up air, forward air, you know? It's all a lot of decision-making that has to be done quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if the stage pick helps into any aspect of that. The Suzaku Castle pick is a bit of an interesting one. For me, I, guess. I mean, it's a fun FD just to play around on. I can see Toon Link benefiting a little bit, uh, being able to wall jump off the bottom, should he find himself in that situation. Right. But, I mean, Rosalina has very good stalling tactic. Oh. If he had gone for that second hit, I think he might have hit that. I can't say personally. I don't play this character, but... Okay. Very aggressive aerial war ending out heavily in favor Very of nice. as he comes in with a forward smash. That forward air just comboed into that, too. I cannot believe that, especially Rosalina being so light. And he is hammering away at Luma, too. Kevros has been very uh, wise as to how he needs to poke out at Fallen, because Fallen's also been very uh, perceptive of how Kevros is poking at him. We've seen an adaptation from the midway point of Game 1, and all throughout so far of Game 2, Fallen's been doing a good amount of approaching, where he's trying to keep 
uh, Luma within Rose's body, within her shield, so that he's not as vulnerable. But Kevros has been able to poke around that. So Fallen tr finally making use of being able to build up that pressure with Luma, send Kavros off stage, set up the stock kill. It's surprisingly rare in this set, and that's something that you don't normally say for Rosalina. Yeah, I mean, I think Fallen's doing a good job of adapting to where his advantages and disadvantages lie in this matchup, because we've already seen most of the damage that Toon Lake has taken this game has been from offstage. And just to roll around the bomb set up there. Um, moving around Toon Lake is pretty crazy because he puts out so many different hitboxes. You've got to think about bombs, boomerang, and trying to get close. Otherwise, you're going to take a forward air or a grab. Hey, he's a wild child, man. He's got plenty of hitboxes he can throw quickly and safely. I feel like that was a missed opportunity for Kevros mm -hmm. to eliminate Luma. Yep, I th the problem is, though, he had the bomb in his hand, so I don't know how much damage he could have gotten on Luma before Fallen would have been able to get down. So I might guess that he maybe just kind of had a bit of a panic moment. Yeah. Did, oh, my God. All right, that was that was insane. Connecticut is popping off for their boy for taking that game, too. Fallen unshaken. It's just another day in the biz. Yep. He didn't, he didn't lose the set yet. He lost the game. Nah, but these so two he's are still staying alive. Yeah, but these two are scrapping right now. Yeah, very well played from Kev Rose, keeping himself alive there. And he picked things up incredibly well from that panic situation. That could have ended horribly for him, but catching an air dodge and knowing just how valuable up air is for Toon Link. Good pressure on the shield from Fallen, using his own jab. And he's got Kev Rose above him, but Karo, he actually manages to land. This is going to be a bit more of an uphill battle for Kevros just because Rosalina can make such good use of the platforms for defensive purposes. Mm -hmm. If she's sitting in center stage and able to position Luma properly, this entire stage is fall-ins for the taking. Yep. Tina right there, he's just waiting for the air dodge. Doesn't quite get it. Yeah, the Northeast doesn't air dodge no. uh, out of habit anymore. I feel like that's gotten beaten out of everyone so quickly. And I'm really glad because you leave yourself so vulnerable to it. Yep. That's going to be a good thing going into Smash Ultimate, too. Yeah. Definitely not as free of an option. Uh, definitely more vulnerable afterwards. Oh, yeah. But we're not there just yet. Still sitting here where Kevro's sitting with a bit heavy on the percentage end of things, but doing a good job of trying to slow down the match. Yep. Interesting that one would want to slow down the match against Rosalina ever because she's usually very passive. Right. But... I mean, Fallen, that's the nature of zoning characters, though. Fallen's doing a good job of staying up in his face, not letting him set up. At As I say, that takes time to back off. Yeah, yeah. Kevros. Ooh, okay. Oh. Boomerang actually coming in super clutch yep. there. Interrupt Luma. Hits I, Rosa. That's not going to kill quite yet, but another one of those put Fallen in dangerous territory. Yeah, the back air, very quick, very... Um, very little end lag on it. It's going to allow... Just whiffed that up smash right there. I feel like that was a missed opportunity right there. He got the bomb. It could have been a forward air. It could have, but the positioning on it, a little bit off. But I feel like that's just because Kevros has been incredibly aware of where Fallen wants to position his Luma. Mm -hmm. And that's why Kevros has been able to survive to such extreme percentages. Oh. However, excellent puppeteer work from Fallen yep. is no going one. to allow him to put out a neutral air. Right below the ledge. Yeah, no one saw that one coming. Unfortunately, he just missed the tech there. He's not out of it just yet. He's got to fight Rage, Rage Rosalina, though. And so if Fallen can keep Luma, this game could be over quickly. Very true. However, Kevros is very aware of that, trying to come in with aerials and projectiles alike. Get rid of that Luma as best as he can. Look at the mix-up of the pressure with the bomb <laughs> sitting there. Kevros is finally taking advantage of the fact that the bombs are sitting there because of gravitational mm -hmm. pull. Yeah, I know we see, um, we see some setups with setting bombs from regular Link, but I don't know if Toon Link can even do that so efficiently. So this is probably something that Kev hasn't had a lot of practice in, but is right. definitely, there it is this again! Is, this is definitely a set adaptation. Kevro is playing incredibly well. Once again, going to be able to greet an air dodge with up air, and now setting up for a last stock situation once again. However, the percentage is sitting heavily into Fallen's favor. Yep, Fallen was just able to use the bomb and get his own combo going, much Toon Link-esque. Grab, he's off stage again. This is dangerous for Kev right now. Yes. Now, unfortunately, just due to the nature of these characters, having a lot of percentage does not favor Kevros nearly as much as it does for Fallen. Where Fallen's able to take great use of Rage for the increased knockback. Kevros, he's just sort of sitting there a lot more vulnerable just because it's a light character, man. Yep. 
especially being at such a high percent. Yeah, Fallen kind of just throwing an up smash up there, and being at such a low percent, the risk is not there, so he can just kind of spam his up smashes, whatever he wants to go for. Yeah, he can do it. However, Luma's gone. Fox ticking now. Kevro's got to take advantage of this situation. Yep. Trying to go for the aerial kills like that. He's trying to bring this battle upwards, yeah. trying to make a little whatever he can to abuse that rage. And that's what he's got to do, too, especially when Luma's gone. You've got 13 seconds to hit Rosa as hard as you can without having that body block in the way. Ooh, excellent back air. Mm -hmm. Placed by Fallen is going to allow Luma to come in. However, that was so close. Like, that was actually amazing time for Fallen with the decision on where he was deciding to tech, because that very easily could have ended mm -hmm. with curtains for him. However, the pressure is building up for both these players. Bringing himself off stage feels yeah. really dangerous, especially Ooh. against Fallen. However, and to put yourself above Luma like that when he's got to make his way back to Rosa, dangerous. I mean, look, look at it this way: Kevros has nothing to lose at this point. They're both at high percentage. This is the last game. I wouldn't say nothing to lose. He's got the set to lose. He does, but he's also got the set to win. You're right about that much. I mean, at this point, he might as well go for all the gamble. Really smart recovery, holding on to the bomb, trying to wait out his hero spin. And he knew that at that point he could not tether to the stage down there. He <gasps> and he lands the up smash, and Kevros actually takes a win on Fallen. Connecticut wow. is roaring for their boy as Kevros comes out with and a PGR win. Clipboard's rushing the oh stage. My and God. don't worry, we'll be seeing that much more insane. Fallen later on, but very well played from wow. Kevros. I don't think anyone saw that one coming. Oh no, my God. That, that was definitely a. Uh, Incredibly played match from Kevros. Fallen also played it well, but that's just sort of how you adapt in this situation. Um, we have also been rushed here for our commentary. Uh, Feminist now being taken over by player Yo, four. I, I'm just saying, Bracket's ruined. He's on light side now. That's how Waterfall is going to work. Yo, our one and two seater is on the same side. Yo, I'm going to throw. <laughs> I'm on, if I lose, I'm on the opposite side. I ain't even tried to win. I got the easy road. <laughs> Yo, right. it's over. So. It's